good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. So, how was the homework? <laughs> uh, how many of you remember homework? Hmm. How many of you did the homework? Um, how many homeworks? One or two? <laughs> two, right? First, can you hear? Back there, can you hear? Okay. Uh, the first homework is? Applying meditation, right? Applying meditation in the in the while you're having lunch. How was it? Good or no good? Good, raise your hand. No good? Same? Don't care, good or no good? <laughs> so meditation experience always changes, right? This is really important to remind ourselves again and again. So meditation experience is like stock market. <laughs> meditation experience is like wave of the ocean. The wave of the ocean go up and down. So this morning might be good, afternoon so-so. And evening, terrible. And next, oh, good. And next day, haha, aha, moment, you know. And then next day, dull, unclear. And next day, spacious openness. So it changes, experience changes. But something is not changing. Do you know what is that? Awareness. Awareness never change. But the problem is we not recognize. We always like the flavor. We like the cloud. And we don't see the sky itself. Because sky is always there, always present, always available, right? So the birds are flying in the sky all the time without knowing the sky. Fish swimming in the river or in the, in the ocean without knowing the ocean. You know about that? It's become, it's become like that, you know. So awareness, when you feel wonderful, there's awareness. When you feel awful, there's awareness. So... What we call, when we meditate like that, there's two things happen. Two things that the journey, the journey has two things. One is experience, which is go up and down, up and down, up and down. But the another thing is what we call realization. The realization develops slowly, slowly, slowly. And what realize? Actually realize about the awareness itself. So that realization doesn't change, actually. But it is so kind of like slow, the realization takes, take, takes some time. Once you have realization, it never changes. Like, once you know how to swim, and you know how to swim the rest of your life, isn't it? Once you know how to drive, and you know how to drive the rest of, rest of your life. So the realization is like that. But it doesn't have flavor. Realization doesn't have flavor. No flavor. But then what we like flavor? Aha! Uh, what was the Another expression? Yahoo? Ooh! Yeah, ooh! Yeah. Any other? Ooh la la, yeah, France. In France, they say ooh la la. 
um, in Spanish? Burrito? In Chinese? Awa. Wow. Why is not Chinese? <laughs> hmm? Kiwa. Tena. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gosh. Oh, Tena. <laughs> so, we are looking for the this um, too much about the flavor, right? So even though you can be with the awareness, you can connect with awareness, but we, we are not satisfied. We are looking for that flavor. So remind yourself again, again, back to awareness, back to awareness. Then realization develops faster. If we are lost with the, with the experience, then realization becomes slower. And the and the one thing it helps once we know about the awareness. Awareness like sky, awareness always there. We see up there's awareness, down there awareness. We see, we know there's awareness. We don't know there's awareness. Confused there's awareness. Once you have some view, what we call view, then you can always go back to that. Let go up and down. Let go up and down. So then what happened is, the realization become more clear, more clear. Awareness become more clear, more clear, more clear, more clear. And you don't mind the up and down. Up, of course, you feel very good. Down, it's okay. You can be with the, uh, the awareness become more visible. Even you have down experience. And special, what we call we learn the most is the when the experience go down. When the meditation experience loses the flavor. And special, sometimes you might have dull, agitation, foggy, lost taste, a lot of bala 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 yada yada. In that time, if you can be with awareness, even when you feel dull, when you feel a lot of thought, when you feel a lot of emotion, that's a really good step to improve, to connect with the dull, connect with the awareness itself. So the recognition begins to develop. <clears throat> okay, so the Remember about these three things? Three principles of meditation. The first one, non-meditation. You don't have to meditate. Second one, don't get lost. Third one, mm -hmm, good. <laughs> so anybody who, who want, want to describe what you heard what you heard about the non-meditation? Raise your hand. This is not the question, okay? To, to describe. To reflect. To reflect about what I'm saying. Non-meditation. What, okay, what special you understood today about the non-meditation? Yeah, here, a microphone. Thank you first. Um, yes. Thank you uh, for this great opportunity. So um, I guess non-meditation means no expectations, mm -mm. non-judgment, um, just to be with the meditation, uh, be it instead of a do meditation. That's mm -hmm. my understanding. OK, thank you. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just being, not try to fix, not try to control 
not try to remove, not try to create any special state. Not need, you know, not necessary. If needed, we should do. But we don't need it. Why? Why we don't need? Awareness is always there. And that awareness is always complete. Always, always perfect. We just need to be with that. So that's all. Do nothing, achieve everything. How nice, no? <laughs> Special good for the lazy meditator. <laughs> Next. Meditation is simply connect the knowing. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay, so now, so first is um, non meditation. And second is don't get lost. So, what is the meaning of don't get lost? What you understood? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so simply connect with awareness actually is don't get lost. Right. Uh, don't get lost is uh, uh, to a sense of presence, being and relaxation, and how to connect um, to recognize what is awareness and the motivation to help make the connection. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Mm. So I think we should do five more minutes for discussion about the three principles of the meditation, what you understood, okay? This is reflect, reflection discussion. And, uh, oh. okay, two people only this time. Two person? So three minutes, three minutes, maybe six minutes total. So where's the bell? So I will ring the bell and uh, one person talk, and I will ring another bell, the another person talk, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> two people. And if you cannot find a, a person who can talk with you, you can move to other place also. Okay, how was it? More confused or more clear? More, more confused, raise your hand. More clear, raise your hand. Mm, both, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so more confused is good. More clear, also good, no? <laughs> both is better. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so any want to share or ask question? Thank you, Rinpoche. Uh, my question is regarding do not get lost. Uh, when I do the formal meditation, uh, I probably only need like 20% of my attention effort, for example, on object, uh, maybe on visual or on sounds. But for the informal, sometimes I have to pay greater attention, even 100% to the object. So what should I do on these circumstances? Still uh, keep the attention effort, not 100% get controlled by the outside object. For example, just like a surgery operation. If you do surgery operation, you know, it's real life and death. So even with 100% attention, I'm not sure if I can do it. But this time, so the awareness or the consciousness is completely driven by the outside object. What should I do in this circumstance to still connect with awareness? Thank you. Yeah, main issue is the how many percent of the awareness or not. That's not the main issue. Main issue is whether you 
still remember the object or not. Whether you still be with the breath or hear the sound or see the flower. So that is the measurement. Uh, like example of the surgery, if you want to have very strong focus, sometimes you cannot have strong focus. Your mind becomes more wonder, more nervous, more coherent. So the, if the surgery becomes more calm, actually more relaxed, you will have more concentration. So the, it's not about the, the percentage of the, com, the, uh, the concentration. You, you don't need care as long as if you know the object. So the measurement is annoying. Yeah. How many of you, when you try to focus on something and you lose, you grab, you lose the focus? I mean, your mind become non-grabbable of the object. Cannot grab the object. Raise your hand. So this is a little bit too tight, but. That is also good. That is your mind become non-conceptual state. The glimpse. There's a gap. Huh. A flower. You know, if you watch flower, a breath. <laughs> you cannot identify the breath. There's a gap. At the same time, you're not lost. So there's a glimpse, glimpse of gap. Great, be with that. And then breath comes. And suddenly you will recognize breath again. Okay, breath. A breath, uh, and become, become, cannot grab, become blank again. Actually, not blank. There's awareness. Or we feel like blank. Uh, that is kind of like. Uh, glimpse of open present, open awareness. But don't look for that. If it comes automatically, you can be. If it doesn't come, it's also okay. Hmm? So, so when you watch your breath, just kind of like Knowing and how to know the breath also depend on the personality. So normally, what we call there are three types of personalities: body personality, speech personality, mind personality. Actually, there's five, but I think I, I don't want to confuse too much. Just three is simple. <laughs> the body personality works with the shape, color, position. Diagram, direction, like shape and color. Body has shape and color, right? And speech personality works with a lot of voices, labeling. A breath, oh, okay, okay. breath going, oh, no, no, no. Now out, 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 and coming, coming, coming again, and breath from nose, and then the lungs, and then expanding lungs, oh, yeah, coming out, oh, you know. Blah, blah, blah. So you have to say it, breathing, I'm breathing, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, you know. You know how to communicate, how to. Have this this word right? And mind personality, you need to feel the breath. So you might need to feel the sensation, the warm sensation when the breathing out, and the breathe in cool sensation. So, or you need to just feel the breath, almost like you don't know, cannot really describe. You can do that, but the other if the the other person is not your personality, cannot really get it. But in a way, you have to feel the breath. So there's three personalities. So all these three are good. You don't need to imitate your friend's meditation experience. Your friend might say, I need to feel the sensation. Without feeling sensation, how could you aware of breath? You know? You say, No, no, I need to say the breath. I have to talk. Without talking, how you can be aware of breath? The other said, no, 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 breath has kind of like diagram, shape and colors coming in and, you know. <laughs> so all three are good. How to connect with that, how to observe the three personality. Any next question?
or sharing. So when we ask question and then become less question. Okay, last question and many people raise hand, you know. I'm afraid this is a little bit of a silly question, but there's when you're very focused on something that you're doing, that's like a focused attention. Mm -mm. But then there can be another layer of you recognizing that you have focused attention. Mm -mm. So can you differentiate, explain that a little bit? Mm -mm. Because when we're at work, we have to apply a lot of focused attention or in our everyday life. Mm -mm. But how is that different from then the recognition of the focused attention? Mm -mm. So um, awareness of the awareness. And awareness knows by itself. So there are many different aspects of awareness. But the main important here is the view and the motivation here. The view is general, that we know that there is awareness. Awareness meaning knowing. Awareness meaning you are not unconscious, you have conscious. And then the motivation is, I'm going to practice the meditation with the breath. So now the motivation will remind, remember the view, the motivation. And just knowing the breath, for some people, you might experience that you are knowing that you are breathing. So this extra awareness comes. For some people, no need extra awareness. Just knowing the breath recognizes itself. So it depends on the people. So all are good. Next. Yeah. Three of them together. Now, Anila first. It seems like whatever is happening that would be good or bad, you're saying this is good. You know, you can't do it, so it's good. You can't do it, so it's good. Is there anything that is not good or bad? For the meditation, if you forget the awareness, then bad. <laughs> <laughs> so for the meditation, there's only one obstacle, which is you forget the awareness. Right? Other than that, there's no any obstacle. Actually, you can meditate with everywhere, anytime, with anything. Anything. So I, I learned this from Minneapolis last month. Uh, Minneapolis, you know Minneapolis? I was in the car and going to somewhere. And there's a big truck in front of us. So they're blocking. When you go this way, truck comes this way. When you go that way, truck comes there. So I look at the back of the truck. It's a shipping shipping truck, you know? And then the, the back of the truck said, we can ship anything, anywhere, anytime. So I thought, oh, good advertisement for meditation. <laughs> we can meditate with anything, everywhere, anytime. Right? Good. But only thing is, if you forget, forget the awareness. So that's for the meditation. But for the application level, so what we call like, when you meditate, if you are not following your negative thought and bring the action, then whatever negative thought, if you be with awareness, it doesn't make karma. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything before actual action. But if you do action, then it has become negative action, whatever you do. So if you meditate, whatever comes in your mind, don't care. Everything is in awareness. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Rinpoche. Um, the concept of uh, uncontrived comes up a lot. 
And I was wondering if you could talk a little more about it. It seems like there's always a level of contrived. Always what? There's always a level, level of, yeah. of, of contrived. It can be a, s a really small level, you know, and then the big levels, you know, in meditation, I'm sitting at my favorite beach and I'm, the sun is shining and I'm having a latte and whatever. Very, very contrived, right? But there's a smaller level as well and it seems like within meditation practice, it's hard to get away from a small level of uncontrived. Could you talk about that just a little? Just allow. Allow to contrive. Mm -hmm. So when you allow to contrive, you're not contriving, right? The problem is, oh, I'm contriving. This is supposed to not contrive, uncontrive, 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 you know. <laughs> so why not if you contrive? But, it, but important is, when we allow to contrive, then it is the, the fixed mind is, is gone now. The, you are not, not one, you are not lost in it. So you are again including in the awareness. So e awareness is expanding. You are not particular contriving, but your mind automatically contrive. Why not? Let's contrive. So then it, it, it liberated by itself. Although still there's contrive, some contrive going on. Don't be afraid. Be brave. Be brave. <laughs> Allow to contrive. But don't particular create contrive. Look for that. It doesn't come? OK. Comes? OK. Let them come. Let them go. Yeah? I'm not exactly sure what's going on today. I've heard these teachings from you for years. But today, there's a level of cutting through the fixation on non-conceptuality that um, is very clear for me today. Not that I'm grasping at clarity, but <laughs> right. um, I'm directly experiencing the self-liberative nature of phenomena mm -hmm. today. Wonderful. In that it truly doesn't matter. Right. The ethics matters. Right. The conduct matters. Yeah. Yet the experience itself is going to liberate as long as I am aware yeah. without fixation. Yeah. Without grasping. And I've heard this for years and years and years. But this is the for result. some reason today, this I, I don't. This is a result from many years of practice, maybe. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it, it is there and almost there and there for me. And then maybe the teaching clicks. And oh, oh aha moment. But uh, good. Mm. Yeah. Um, the experience today, you got, got it. At the same time, this flavor comes. The flavor may not last long again, but then now the, the recognition stays. Good. So I have to say there's not much flavor today. In the past, I've had a, a lot, lot of flavor. flavor. Okay. Today, I don't know. It seems very... Natural. Fresh? Fresh and fresh. normal. Good. Like nothing. Maybe, like maybe nothing. tomorrow cannot do that. Probably tomorrow I will be completely ignorant again. <laughs> don't care? It comes okay? Not comes okay? Very good. Thank you, Rinpoche. I feel likewise. But on more on the contrivance, isn't there um, a level of contrivance? For instance, if you want to make a friend with your enemy, um, you know, and, and we talk about that in meditation. Uh, making your enemy your friend, the negative emotion your friend. So if you don't honestly feel that, it's not an authentic experience, but you want to do that. And so you contrive to do, make your enemy your friend, hoping that eventually that compassionate uh, feeling will come to you and, and you can reverse that. Isn't that, or is it a semantical thing we're dealing yeah, with? Is that, isn't that contrivance? Don't you have to contrive to, 
to some degree. Of course, of course. Yeah. you can yeah. contrive. This, this is a good contrive. Okay. You can even allow to a bad contrive also. Why not have good contrive, right? Mm -hmm. We are not blocking contrive. We say uncontrived meaning you can contrive. <laughs> okay, so that's okay to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, but. Um, when we say loss in the contrived meaning, we don't know we are contriving. And we are one with that. So it may form as uncontrived, uncontrived, or may form as contrived, contrived. So both are same thing. But then now here, uncontrived meaning, we just back to the awareness. Anything else allowed. Let them come, let them go. And these things are cannot be obstacle for awareness. Cannot make any changes for the awareness. Cannot pollute, cannot be polluted the awareness. So we don't need to why we have to fear? Because the the our true nature, our fundamental nature is free, is present, pure always there. What we have to do is just connect with that. Awareness. Awareness. Then you don't have to do anything. Thank you. So for the sky, we can have cloud. We don't need to look for blue sky with sun shining all the time. Isn't it? How many of you like blue sky with sun shining? Raise your hand. Okay. If California, yeah? blue sky with sun shining for one year. Will you be happy or no? <laughs> no water, <laughs> no grass green. <laughs> Everything become dry. Right? So, even though in our mind, no thought, no emotion, you know, may not be nice. You may become like a zombie, you know. <laughs> the result of the meditation, in the end, you become like a zombie. Huh? I, I don't know who am I, and I don't know who you are, because I don't have no concept. There's no subject and no object. <laughs> Not nice, no? So what we call monkey mind, is not the problem. The problem is the relationship between you and the monkey mind. If monkey mind become your boss, big problem. If monkey mind become your enemy, big problem. If monkey mind become your friend, solution. So monkey mind is not the issue. Okay. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, microphone. The awareness is uncreated and permanent, if I understand correctly. But that's permanent. not my. But that's not my experience. Mm -mm. When I go to sleep, it's gone. Mm -mm. No matter how hard I try. Mm -mm. If I'm in the hospital, they give me drugs. Mm -mm. It goes. Like that. I mean, you can watch it, and it's black, mm -mm. And, and there's there's no way to recover it mm -mm. until you wake up. So, this morning I talk about five unconscious moment. This morning, unconscious moment, right? I say I will tell you later. Yes. I didn't say five, but unconscious moment, the mental event. Oh yes. This morning. So what do we call five unconscious moment. Uh, one is just you, you, just what you said, fainted. Uh, another faint, faint, coma, all these things. Another is drink too much alcohol, you know, drunk, lost conscious. Another one is moment of dying. The when we die, end of the the dissolution, unconscious for three days maximum, minimum few hours. Uh, Fourth is uh, sleep without dream, deep sleep. 
And the last is the, what we call the, the special meditation, cessation meditation. No thought, no feeling. It, you can achieve that if you block thought and emotion. So this unconscious moment are the mental event. For example, if you go to the countryside of the California, uh, you have the rural area here, where there's no people, no light, no road. So you go there, and in the empty, empty moon, you know, according to lunar calendar, dark moon. New moon is your tiny moon, no? Oh, new moon, no moon? No moon, ah. The tiny moon is what called? Ah, crossover. Okay, so the new moon, you go to the countryside, and in the night, the sky is totally full of cloud. There's no light on the ground. Of course, there's no moon, so cannot have any light from the, through the sky. Everything become dark, right? But the sky, the nature of sky become dark or no? Nature of sky is not dark. But look like it become dark, completely dark. So what we call these five unconscious moments are the mental event, meaning kind of like different manifestation, different situation of the mind. So why? Because now our mind is very narrow, black and white, small, tiny. Our mind is like this. We are looking through small, tiny, you know, to the world. So you only see one particular object. You cannot see right and left very clear, right? You cannot see more than two. Actually, you only see one. Even one that's not clear, actually. But you assume that you see everything from the uh, conceptual level. So it's very tiny and black and white, narrow, delicate, sensitive. <laughs> and that mind, it's not the real big mind, the real awareness, not the full picture. So that has to depend on the subject and the object and the cause and the condition and the body also special, mind and the body, just like uh, um, what we call cup and the water, interdependent. So as we recognize awareness again and again and again, then you can even with the with the conscious, even through through the sleep. So that's what we call sleeping meditation. You sleep, your body becomes paralyzed, everything, but the awareness is illuminating. And not only that, even dying, moment of dying. So for the meditator, there's not really death. There's not gap. These are the not the high level of realization, just first level. And if you fully recognize awareness, then there's no difference between what we call lu nang samsung, body, perception, the outer world, and the mind. There's no difference. But of course, there's no one. No one, no different. One and different is just concept. So you are everywhere and nowhere. Boundless. So many different stages. So right now, you know awareness, and then you want to have the high level realization is impossible. So you cannot experience. Even whatever we know the awareness is conceptual level now. And that conceptual level need to transform into experiential level. And the experiential level need to transform into direct realization level. And direct realization is the first glimpse of the real liberation. The real free freedom, beginning. 
after that nine levels, then you become Buddha. <laughs> so, we have example. So right now, what we understand about the awareness is like learning moon in the book. Painting moon, you know? Oh, moon is like that, shape like this, color is like this, the quality is like this. Although it's no real moon, it's just a painting moon. But there's a lot of relationship with the real moon, the similar quality. You can get real moon through this painting moon. You can learn about moon through the painting moon. Through the book, you can study a lot. So this is right now, it's conceptual level. But, the le but this concept is a good concept. Concept of step, concept of go beyond concept. So we have to practice again, again, again. The second level is what we call experiential level. So one day you go to the uh, countryside and you look at the Leg, and you saw the moon reflection in the leg. So this moon reflection is much better than painting moon, right? More life, more direct quality, much better than painting moon, but still no real moon yet. But you can learn a lot of about the moon from the reflection. So that's what we call experiential level. So now it's understanding level. Then if you try again, try again, try again, become experiential level. A lot of flavors for the experiential level. Now we don't have so much flavor. Even if we want the flavor, we don't have. <laughs> we, we just kind of look foggy and a little bit understood. I think something like that way. And we try and then our mind become blank again. <laughs> So at experiential level, a lot of sensation in the body, you will kind of like feel really uh, happy, joyful, but don't attach to that, okay? It will change, still up and down. Then third is the crispy moon, tiny moon, what do you call Crescent. Crescent moon. So one day you walk, walk, look up, you saw the crescent moon. Ah, that is the real moon. So that's the real moon. That is the what we call direct realization. But still you haven't seen full moon yet. Has to go through the full moon. So nine, nine levels after that. Long way to go, no? But... <laughs> Even when we hear about this great, our true nature, when we might have doubt about our true nature, the Buddha said, it is the, your life become meaningful. Just, just having idea, we have this wonderful nature. Maybe I have this, maybe I don't have, even doubt, it's a lot. So most of you, you've been practiced this, right? You're, you're, you're dedicating your life, you come here, join this two days workshop, let go of a lot of busy things in your life. So you all are definitely doing something meaningful. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. Raise your hand continuously. Raise your hand continuously. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Rabbi Jay. And Welcome. <laughs> just being here and teaching very clearly. Um, I just have a question in terms of um, working in with people, in my case, hospital, but every day we come across people that are um, not so interested in practice, but maybe they're in a transition of some sort. You know, they're sick, they're dying. Um, do you have any, uh, just the, the way that your family um, 
presents this is so uh, direct and simple um, and helpful. It, is there any tips that you would have in working with people or you know when you come in contact with people to um, just be an ordinary person like me and to help the person get a little glimpse or have a little confidence in what they're experiencing? Because sometimes when they're sick or they're dying, it seems like they're already opening so much. And um, they talk very directly or just they want someone to be there with them and um, you know, maybe give them tips. So do you have any tips to pass on to them? Yeah, so I think the depend on the person, how the, how the person is open and if the person has any background or meditation or religious also. So I think the most important is you just be there and listen and uh, try to understand that person and then see whatever you can, I mean, the, according to their openness. If they have some interest of a meditation, you can talk about meditation. The awareness, the mindfulness is always there. And uh, the, the awareness is never going to die. Just be with the awareness. And then the, the greatest opportunity to see the awareness beyond concept is end of the dying, actually. What we call dissolution. Everything dissolves. All the concept, all the subject and object, all these layers, everything dissolves. So what we call mother luminosity, your mind is so present, free, peaceful. So when you rest in that, that's what we call dying meditation. My father was, was in dying meditation for three days. My grandpa, father is three and a half days. Uh, there's a chef in my monastery, in Shirabling Monastery, Palbung, Palbung Shirabling Monastery. There's a chef, uh, Machin, Machin Deva. Now he died, Deva, Deva meaning his past. But when he was alive, he's uh, cooking. He died, he's in meditation, dying meditation. And there's one doctor, Tibetan doctor. He stayed in dying meditation for seven days. Um, and of course, the, the lamas. Are. So if they have some background about that, this really helps. Otherwise, you can pray them, whatever they, if they're another religion, whatever, uh, Buddhist or Christian, whatever, you just pray, ask them to pray with your whatever enlightened being. Or the uh, normal people, they maybe just accept it's not only you, and we all are same. Not only you, we all are same. So sooner or later, we all need to go through this. And it's not only you, but maybe whole hand or. Yeah. Okay, next. Rinpoche, just on what you mentioned about um, after that nine levels to uh, Buddhahood. So these are the Bhumis you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah Bhumis. Okay. Uh, even the first Bhumi seems uh, so way too high for me, uh, beyond my reach in this life. So I was wondering if um, something lower, closer to where I can even uh, think about yeah, so the, the Bhumis normally is in the Mahayana, what we call the many, 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 many eons of practice. But in the Vajrayana, if we practice like this style of meditation, so what we call direct realization is equivalent to the Bhumis, but the, not the real Bhumi as in the Mahayana way. So it's achievable. So if you practice, especially if you practice Mahamuda, we will achieve direct realization. Many people in Tibet, even grandpa, grandma, they know nothing about how to read, how to write. I illiterate, many of them achieve direct realization. And they have prayer will with the mala, amana, and they practice the awareness, and they recognize they have direct realization, and they feel the face full of smile. Smile. If I die today, okay. If I live long, okay. Amana, you know. 
possible, possible. I think somebody raised hand behind there. Yeah, yeah, down there. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Oh wow, that's yes. Not. I, I, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, where your father's conscious would be during the three days of dying meditation. Um, well, around the heart center, go inside three inch, and then there's the space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so and also also like after um, after dying as well. Yeah. So, so during and after. Consciousness, what we perceive right now, the consciousness is very narrow, tiny, and that is uh, bound with the body. So when we connect with this awareness, the nature of that consciousness is big, uh, free. But that big and free consciousness is with us right now, fully, totally but we cannot see it. So when, we, when ordinary, ordinary people die, it's just like wave of the ocean or the cloud. The consciousness changes, changes according to body and mind, relationship. So when we die, we have the dissolution, we become unconscious, we wake up, and then bardo, what we call, you know, and then next life, what we, so awareness, what we call the essence of awareness never dies. So why is it cannot die? Because unborn. Never begin with it. To die, you have to be born. You have to exist first. So it, it is it's empty. Yet there's clarity. And these two are one. Because empty union with clarity, many things are possible. Thought comes, emotion comes, perception comes, samsara, nirvana, everything taking place. So where is my father's mind when he died? There's no location, actually. It's everywhere and nowhere. So some people, they say, when I become Buddha, where should I live? <laughs> Do I need a home? Is there a particular place that I should go? So you don't have to worry about the location anymore. You're everywhere and nowhere. But you cannot really comprehend right now because we are so much fixed with the time and location, right? When we think of beyond that, we cannot really understand. So don't worry if you don't understand, you just be. <laughs> because your nature is just there, and you just be, and you will understand in the future. Not this monkey mind will understand, but your wisdom, which is in it, you, will understand that. Thank you, Rinpoche. So in the morning, you're using the lamp as our awareness. So you mentioned two quality. The second quality is, so the awareness can know itself. So during my practicing, so I try to um, feel it, examine this concept. Sometimes I feel I, I got it, but then later, finish the meditation, I try using the verbal to explain to myself, but I, I still cannot. So could you, uh, using your language, explain a little bit? Thank you very much. So sometimes you got it, sometimes you don't got it, and who knows that? <laughs> yes, that's all. So other people cannot read your thought. Other people cannot read your mind. You know what's going on in your mind. Only you know. So that is the self-luminosity. So experience mind itself. The whatever thought comes, you know. Whatever perception comes, you know. And even you cannot tell, right? Sometimes you look and you cannot describe. Who experience cannot describe? Yeah, that's the awareness, self-awareness. So when you cannot describe, that time you have a having gap. Remember about the breath? When you focus too much and then you lost the 
you cannot aware of breath, become gap. So when we try to find out what that awareness become gap again. But that's good. That's the non-conceptual. <laughs> the gap. Stay with that. But still you can see. You can hear. Yeah, not become unconscious. Everything open. Awareness completely open through your eyes, the ear, nose, tongue. Yet your mind become ungrabbable. Wonderful. Thank you, Rinpoche. I'm having some conceptual um, thinking issues, and I wondered if we could go back to not meditating and meditating, and have you explain the difference between them. Non-meditation is the not meditation. Not meditation is the meditation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, the best meditation is not meditation. What is the meditation? Doing, controlling, blocking thought and emotion. No pizza, no pizza, no pizza. Another type of meditation. Concentration, concentration, concentration. Another type of meditation. Bliss, joy, clarity, openness, spacious, a lot of meditation. So you don't have to do all these things. So that means non-meditation. You just be. So then what you have to do, don't get lost. <laughs> just not lost. That's all. Nothing more than just not get lost. Am I become a zombie or not? Are you a zombie now? That's all. You are not a zombie. The moment of you know you are not a zombie, you are connected with awareness. When you're a zombie, you don't know you're a zombie. When you ask a question, am I a zombie? That means you're not a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Got it? Yes or no? Um, it, kind of. Um, but I would think that... Another example is remember back to the book reading. Mm -hmm. So you read the book, few page, few page, and you don't know what's the reading, what's the meaning. You read three, four, page, five page, right? At the moment of you, know, oh, I lost. The moment of there, you come, you come back. So not meditating is kind of meditating. That's the best meditation. The real meditation. So non-meditation is the real meditation. The meditation is not real meditation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Somebody there? No. Down there? A lot of exercise. Rinpoche. <laughs> You mentioned that uh, we need to develop our awareness throughout our life or each moment. Could you elaborate a little bit more during sleep? How do we practice our awareness during sleep? Sleeping meditation. But how? Maybe in general. I, 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 I know there's a meditation during sleep. Could mm -hmm. you elaborate a little bit? My friend and I were discussing this and mm -hmm. she would like to know a little bit more about uh, that. Okay. I'm asking that uh, yeah. for us. Maybe you know already, but uh, you don't know that you know. <laughs> so, when you, when we, going to sleep, what will happen at the beginning? Feel sleepy, right? Drowsy, sleepy, foggy, feeling a little bit like drunk, right? So at that time, what we have to do? Hmm? Be aware. Be aware of sleepy, dull, drowsy, un, uh, unclear, whatever you have. Just be with that, right? 
Selipi, oke. Okay. Ayo kandinya. Mau selipi, oke. Okay. Arrasin awe nafsu. Uh-uh. So continue aware, and the moment of when you fall into sleep, if you continue to be aware, then sleep will catch the, the meditation. So then all the sleep become meditation until you wake up. So if you sleep one hour, you have one hour, two hour, three hour, you are meditating one, two, three hours. Very good, no? If the sleep become meditation, there's no dream. So two signs, whether you are in sleeping meditation or not. First is not dream. Second is when you wake up, you are wake up through meditation or within the meditation. The moment of you wake up, your mind is in the meditation. So fresh, very relaxed. These two, two signs together, that means sleep become meditation. And at the beginning, you don't know when the sleep become meditation. Even you are in the meditation, you don't know you are you're in the meditation at the beginning. And slowly, slowly, you will know. And then there will be no difference between light on and off. Eyes closed and open. Doesn't matter. You know what's going on. No front, no back. No up, no down. And no time also. But don't expect that now. Now we are we have time. Right? <laughs> we are trapped in the time and the uh, matters. Or if you uh, if you watch the sleepiness and if your mind become more alert, then just rest with the body, the awareness of the body that we did beginning of meditation, remember? Feel with your body and sleep. And that also good. That is also good for the better sleep also. Good for the quality of sleep. Okay, so now, mm, so no meditation. Non meditation is the best meditation. Don't get lost. You know? Don't get lost meaning? Just be aware. Yeah? And contrite? For the experiential level, what is uncontrived? Hmm? When you watch your breath, if your mind is very dull, what to do? Don't care, right? As long as if you still know your breathing, you're okay. <laughs> so sometimes what we call develop clarity. Meaning, go back to awareness. Not that you need to make special experience of clarity. You know, even dullness is the clarity, actually, if you know. So knowing is the awareness. Knowing is the clarity. So important is, if you stay in the awareness, then dull agitation, they will stay for a while and then they will go away. And then the, all the obstacles, all the problems or whatever meditation, it fixed by itself. Self-liberation. When you watch your breath, if there's a lot of thought comes, what to do? 
okay, let them come, right? If there's 10 pizza comes, what to do? Let them come. Important is, if the 10 pizza comes, important is, do I still remember my breath or not? So if you remember your breath, pizza comes like this, you know. One, one pizza comes like that, another pizza comes like that. Breathing in, breathing out pizza. Breathing in pizza, breathing out pizza, breathing in pizza. Okay. Don't care. Many people, the main mistake is watch breath. Oh, pizza. Oh, no, no, no. You, pizza, you, not supposed to be here. I'm meditating. You disturb my concentration. I have to focus on the breath. No pizza, no pizza. Yo, pizza, go away. <laughs> then you lost in the pizza, you know. You are very busy with the trying to block the pizza and pizza become more and more. So the, the important is, oh, do I still remember my breath? Yeah, yeah still breath? Okay, pizza, come, you come. Two, two pizza, three pizza, five pizza, okay. Still, I, I remember my breath. So that is the meaning of uncontrived. So you can be with the breath with happy, clear joy, or you can be with the breath with the dull, with a lot of thought, with not happy. As long as if you remember your breath, you're okay. So, so back to awareness, back to awareness, back to awareness. So then what happens is slowly, slowly, you will lose the aversion and the craving. Remember? Remember? These two are the big problem. Aversion is no pizza, no pizza. When I was young, no panic, no panic. And the craving is looking for flavor, special experience. So these two are the trap. Trap, you know? Uh, the spider, spider net. If the insects, insects go there, you, you, you trap. So the trap, actually, the samsara, what we call samsara, is based on three things. Only three. <laughs> the first is ignorant. Ignorant meaning not recognize the nature. Not, recog not recognize awareness. And then second two, aversion and craving or grasping. This two. And this two makes a lot of problem in our life, right? Yes or no? How, how does this two make problem in your life? Yeah, oh, the microphone is coming. Attachment and aversion are a big problem for me because if I hate it, I really, really, really hate it. And I want to avoid it and go someplace and this and that. If I love it, I really want it. I want to keep it. And uh, that makes a big problem because if I want to keep it, then I have to change a lot of things and big problem. So it's best to give them up. Both. Yeah, good <laughs> idea. Hmm? Give up both. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, but if we have problem that the craving comes back again and again, attachment, or the, the fear the anxiety or whatever, the aversion comes back again and again. What should we do? Because if you say, no, you get out, doesn't work, right? Same like pizza. No pizza, no pizza, more pizza. And if you look for freedom of no aversion, no craving, you know, wisdom, doesn't work again, right? When you want to get the answer about your exam, become blank. So the, the most important secret 
is what we call self-transformation, self-antidote, self-liberation. So how to do that? Same as your breath. So now we are using our breath as support for our meditation, right? Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. Eventually you can use form, sound, smell, test, sensation. Then even aversion. Watch the aversion. You don't need to say, yes sir, aversion. You don't have to say, you get out. You just watch. If you watch that grasping, if you watch that aversion, the, the grasping and aversion become object of your meditation. Just like breath. So breath become object of your meditation. Why not with that? Hatred, aversion. Why not have desire? You, now you don't have to do anything with the desire. You just let be there and you are. Watch. And you develop concentration with the desire, awareness through desire. And then what we call, if you see the river, you're out of river. You have very famous river here in, in California, right? Special Bay Area. A lot of flood comes, you know. What do you call Russian River. In the winter, when you see the Russian River, it's very big, right, in the winter? Now it's very small. I saw that. But winter is very big. So if you see the Russian River, you're not in the river. Right? But river still can go, continued. So when you see the hatred, you are not fall in the trap of the hatred. But hatred still go on for, for a while. Totally okay. When you watch your breath, you need breath, isn't it? If you watch breath, strong your breath, then how you can practice breathing meditation? You, you should have breath. So same with the hatred. So same with my panic. So in the end, how I can make friends with my panic is I use panic as support for my meditation, just like breath. So then panic is not so big deal. Panic becomes support for my concentration, support for my awareness. And when you see the panic, you're out of panic. But still panic there. But you don't really mind. Yeah. So power of awareness. So now the this morning one lady asked me about the I'm lazy, right? I cannot meditate. So how should I do that? Anybody has similar question? <laughs> I have same question also. When I was young, I'm very lazy. I love the idea of meditation, but I don't like the practice of meditation. I feel very bored, you know. What I'm looking is I'm looking for happiness, free from my panic, joy. And then my father's teaching is watch your breath. Very boring, stupid, you know. Yeah. Breathing in, breathing out. Today also breathing in. Tomorrow also breathing in. Next day again breathing in. Breathing. How come watching this stupid breathing and will free my panic? You know? <laughs> it's almost like these two go to two different directions. Panic is there, breathing is here. You know? Panic is in the, in the east, breathing is in the west. So I do with the breathing. I'm even not thinking about the panic. <laughs> so how I can free my panic? But then actually, what I learned is same thing. You watch your breath. Eventually, you can watch your panic. But at the beginning, you cannot watch your, your panic, so you have to watch your breathing. So you, at least you have to practice this one month. Don't jump into your emotion at the beginning. You cannot do that. You cannot be with that. So just watch breathing. So 
how to develop this uh, habit of meditation. First, you have to meditate very short time. And try to find maybe something that easy, that maybe you, you might feel in the morning more easy, or in the evening more easy, or in the chair is more easy, in the cushion is more easy, or maybe you might have a special spot, spot for meditation <laughs> under the tree or the view. So try to find where you feel the comfortable and then meditate short at the beginning short time. If you want to meditate for fifteen minutes every day, don't try that first five minutes. And do it five minutes for thirty days. Thirty days. So to form new habit, it will take thirty days. If you survive Five minutes for every day, the end of the 30 day, then you already have some habit. After that, it becomes more easy. Then, after three months later, it becomes very easy. Just like taking shower, you know. How many of you are taking shower every day? Raise your hand. <laughs> People in the Himalaya mountain, they don't take shower, you know. They may take shower one year, one time. Maybe there's special day in the in the autumn, fall, fall in the fall. Uh, the what they call the special calendar. The huh? In China, you have it like that for one week. There's the calendar say, oh, you should take shower. It's really good, you know. <laughs> They may take, but only maybe some of them only legs and hands, you know, hair, hair. <laughs> but it doesn't feel so much smell in the Himalaya mountain. Cold, you know, up there. And then sometimes they come down to Kathmandu. Kathmandu is a lower part of the Nepal. It's warm and humidity in the summer. So now smell goes around 10 meters. And the people from Himalaya mountain come to Kathmandu. Uh, everywhere they smell, you know. Sometimes they come to see me, and I know that the Himalayan people waiting outside, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ask them to take shower, you know. It's good for your health, you know, take shower. They say, oh, yeah, Rubachi, oh, yeah. <laughs> and what they do? They don't take shower. <laughs> and sometimes they take, I give soap, you know, they take shower one time. And after that, even you pay them, they don't want to take shower. <laughs> because no habit. Right? We have habit. And for us, it's just normal. Maybe you spend time with your phone, how many hours per day? Huh? Four hours? Three hours? You spend more time with the television or phone? Phone, raise your hand. Television? The scientist said average person watch television four hours a day. And phone, maybe even more than that, right? So this is a habit. <laughs> you build up habit. So how to build a habit? There's some kind of like you need to have some creativity. There's some uh, something which is uh, excitement. So you can create that for your meditation, especially this style of meditation. Because you can meditate with everywhere, anytime, with anything, right? So maybe one week or one day, focus more about the breathing meditation. Next week, focus more about the sound meditation. Or another day, focus more about the awareness of the body and explore about that. And you can do th this throughout the day. So make it something interesting. And you can have something at, at your office, some kind of flower of meditation. You, know? you can have uh, a flower, and whenever you see the flower awareness, or flower awareness, you're, you're driving 
laptop, flower awareness. Oh, flower awareness. Maybe you can bring one real live flower and flower a little bit getting old and then sick a little bit and die, you know. <laughs> Leaves are fall down, impermanent. It changes. And you can, whenever you see the flower, remember your meditation. So don't stay, don't leave that flower too long. Otherwise, after two weeks later, your mind becomes used to it. And even you see the flower, you don't remember meditation. So now you need to change maybe same area, maybe next time it's stone. Or next day, a piece of wood. So build up habit. Or whenever you open the refrigerator, awareness. Refrigerator, awareness. Refrigerator, awareness. Refrigerator, awareness. Or bathroom, awareness. You know. Go to restroom, awareness. Restroom awareness. Or meal. So you see, you cannot build too much habit at the beginning. So which one you like? Maybe always with a meal. And you will have three sessions, right? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Today you, you did with a meal, right? Yes or no? How many of you meditate while you're having a meal? Raise your hand. How many of you did homework during the lunch break? Raise your hand. <laughs> Some people. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another important is, especially when you feel not happy, panic, tired. You, you back to the meditation. Angry breath, back to the breath. Um, panic, anxiety, back to the breath. Worry, back to the breath. Stress, stress, back to the breath. Yeah? So that is really good for, um, good for stress. Good for stress meaning what? Become more and more stressful? Less stressful. That means bad for stress, no? <laughs> oh, but we understand good for stress meaning free stress, right? Okay, so good for stress. Yeah, so three things for the meditation. View, meditation, application. The view is the recognition of awareness. So you all know, right? And the meditation is the exercise, the practice. Go back to the awareness through breath, through form, through sound. There are many, many different types of meditation. You don't have much time. Go back. Try again. Try again. Try again. So just be. Be with it. Be. You know? And then, number three, application. You apply in everyday life. So to have one regular meditation session, just just short time first, 30 days per promise. Don't promise that from today on. I'm going to meditate for five minutes forever. Then that five minutes become very heavy. <laughs> just think that 30 days only. From today, for 30 days only, I will meditate whether I like or not like. <laughs> I'm going to do so. So sometimes if you're sick, you cannot do, it's okay. If you're traveling somewhere, you cannot do, okay. But otherwise, try. So then, end of the 30 day, you will have new habit, right? Uh, then it may become forever, you know. But if you think it, it has to be forever, very difficult to become forever. Now the so now how to bring how this if impact in our life? Actually, if we practice like that, just be like that, then the first the three things like samsara root of samsara is three things. Remember, 
What are those three? Ignorance is the basis. And then? Aversion and craving, the two things, right? So the ignorant become less less because you will get more familiar with the awareness. And you can able to have aha, like after a certain level, oh yeah, that's it. Why I did not understood until today. I heard of this hundred times. I tried to practice this hundred times. Oh yeah. So the 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 recognition become more clear, more clear, more clear. At the same time, the aversion and craving become less. You become more free, more brave also at the same time. Fast. Whatever up and down, you, you will not become so sensitive. Normal our mind is very sensitive, right? You, you will say, I'm fine, if someone asks you, hello, how are you? Uh, I'm good, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. But inside you're crying, you know. <laughs> but outside you're smiling. <laughs> I'm very well. <laughs> Some people, you know, when I was young, sometimes the panic, I feel like panic is there for 24 hours. But outside people doesn't know much. You just say normal, <laughs> but inside crying. So, but once we really connect with our true nature, there's a real joy comes. Joy. Joy, not like sense of drinking coffee, you know. Hee <laughs> not like that. <laughs> More like contentment, appreciation. More like confident. And the uh, kind of like um, resilient. And the uh, um, thing in Tibet, what we call thing. Um, they cannot find the real translation, but more like decisiveness. Not really, you're not making decision, but like com confident, kind of like. Uh, your mind become open, flexible, and joyful. They, at the same time, the clarity, awareness, loving kindness, compassion, wisdom become more and more manifest. So you don't have to do much. But all the go good qualities comes automatically. Quite nice, no? You don't have to say, no pizza. You don't have to say, I need all the answer. <laughs> it's just pee. And the pizza dissolve automatically. <laughs> Even pizza doesn't dissolve, also OK. And you can get the answer comes automatically. So this is a really good practice. And this practice changed my life. I have always feel eager to share this and teach this and feels very happy. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for all of your coming. And uh, we will conclude.